Hi, I'm Todd Purdom. And I'm Dee Dee Myers. And welcome to the last Capital Conversation of this long campaign. Dee Dee, it's Wednesday afternoon in Washington. Everyone's pretty sleepy. What a night, huh? What a night indeed. I mean, it was, you know, by Wednesday, I mean, by Tuesday, we can't even keep track, track of what day it is. By Tuesday, everyone expected that uh, Obama would win. And he did. I mean, it, anything could have happened. But people expected that he would win. And yet it was still an incredibly emotional evening for a lot of people as the, you know, colors on the map began to turn in states that seemed possible but should have been out of reach turned yep. for Obama. Uh, and I think what we saw, which we haven't seen, I can't remember ever, was people celebrating in the streets spontaneously. He saw a path to victory for him and his candidacy. And through all the doubters and all the opposition and all the people who urged him not to do it or, or to change his strategy when he wasn't doing so well right. against Hillary Clinton, in the face of Hillary Clinton's very strong campaign uh, and, and a strong campaign by the Republicans, uh, he won. And he, he seems to have figured that out a long time ago before anyone else did. Well, I think it's in some ways a reflection of his, his, of his personality and his temperament. You know, he figured that the country was ready for change and that he was as good a messenger of that change as anyone. And so he set out um, to see if he could do it. Uh, he obviously thought that the country was more ready than I think a lot of other people thought, myself included. I wasn't sure, but he seemed to think it was worth a shot. And what was amazing was they had a strategy. There's no perfect strategy. No. Um, but rather than, you know, completely throw their strategy out the window when things got tough, uh, they, they stuck to it. And one, one of the tenets of that was to expand the electoral map. They always knew that they'd have to um, play in more states if they wanted to have a lot of paths to victory. And in the end, they were successful. They won states like Virginia, Indiana that have not gone Republican in 44 years. Right. And you know what's so interesting is that there's, you know, the, the, the very closest states at the end... I mean, North Democrats, sorry, not gone Democratic. Right. Yeah. The very closest states at the end, North Carolina, Indiana, Obama could have won without those. He could have even won with the states that were one step closer, Florida, Ohio, and Virginia. Yeah. He could have won without those. But the fact that he had them show that their strategy of creating a lot of options and sort of, you know, blocking McCain out of very many paths again, was an incredible strategic success. So now we have change. How about John McCain? His campaign just seemed star-crossed. It seemed that he just couldn't catch a break, and the more bad things happened, the more bad things happened to him. Last night I thought he was unbelievably gracious. He was his old self. Right. He sounded like the John McCain I felt I knew years ago from covering him in the Senate. Um, what happens to him now? He, he offered to reach out to Senator Obama. Do you right. think maybe they could do something together? I th it'd be wonderful for the country if they did. They have a couple of areas where they overlap. One of them is immigration. Yep. You know, they agree much more than they disagree. There are other areas on national security where they agree more than they disagree. And it, climate it, change. Climate change is another one, and that that that's um, and, and I think you know energy um, independence more broadly is another one where I think they have a lot uh, that they more than, than, than that, that, that they agree on than disagree. So if Senator McCain would not just say those beautiful words which he did last night with so much grace, but actually you know walk the walk, I think it would be a wonderful message to the country that it's time for everybody to roll up their sleeves and put aside their partisan di divisions and move forward. Experience suggests it's unsured hell for a losing presidential candidate to simply come back to the Senate. Well, John today, Kerry had a terrible you time know, doing Senator it. McCain, uh, after traveling for months and months in a private plane with Secret Service and having every uh, you know whim tended to, got into his SUV with his friend Lindsey Graham, pulled out of the condo, drove to his cabin in Sedona, just the two of them in the truck. Well. It happens fast. It happens fast. It and happens the reverse has happened overnight. now for Senator Obama, right. who already had an extraordinary level of protection. We saw last night those sheets of bulletproof glass. Which and so President Bush has had for quite some time. Yeah, but I mean, now his life is going to change forever. And it right. seemed to me that he, he had a sense of that last night. It was a very sober speech he right. made. It wasn't an exultant speech. And now the hard work begins. I think one of the challenges that, you know, as Senator Obama becomes president-elect Obama and ultimately President Obama, you have to take a stand. Senator Obama has been terrific at sometimes being on both sides of an issue or finding common ground and rising above it. When you're president, you cannot do that. You have to make a decision that's going to make a lot of people angry, and it's, a, it's, a, it's what makes the presidency such a lonely job sometimes. Well, there's obviously still a lot left to talk about, and we may well be back with an inauguration conversation. So stay tuned. Until then, thanks for watching, and keep reading VF.com.